nothing, no shocking element in this exam. So what we advise that uh, the people who revise, revise, revise must have fared or must have done really good in this exam. The, this exam, mostly the rank would be the game of accuracy. If the students who are more accurate, they will definitely get a good rank in this exam because what is the fight is accuracy because it, everything was predictable, okay? So let's see the six, seven questions which I have gathered and you can correct me regarding any question you want, okay? So let's start with the first question. Which of the following act as a reversal agent for rock coronium, a neuromuscular blocking agent? So as already so many times in my videos, and in recent lectures, I said that reversal agents are very commonly being asked. Now, this time they asked a direct, very simple, simple or simplest question on reversal. I mean, last exam, I saw a little better question on reversal agent. This time, though, it was even more simple question on reversal agent. So what is the reversal agent for rock coronium? So rock coronium is a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent. Now, this non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents have... Uh, two type of reversal agent, indirect and direct reversal agent. Rocuronium has one direct reversal agent, which could have been a better answer, named Sugamadex. But, and last exam, Sugamadex, they asked. But this patient exam, there was no option. It was atropine, baclofen, neostigmine, dantrolene was the option. Sugamadex was not in the option. So indirect reversal agent, which we frankly use more commonly, is neostigmine. Neostigmin. So neostigmin is a anti acetylcholine which increases the quantity of acetylcholine, which increases the quantity of acetylcholine and helps in reversal of any non depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent, including rocodonium. So answer was neostigmin. So atropin is an uh, adjuvant which we use with neostigmin to counteract the uh, muscarinic side effect of neostigmin. So atropine is given along with the neostigmin, but it is not a reversal agent. So this cannot be the answer. Now, baclofen has no role in reversal of muscle relaxant. It's just a skeletal muscle relaxant, which we use in muscle spasm and all. So not an answer. Now, dandrolene, dandrolene is a uh, antidote for management of malignant hypothonia. And it's a central muscle relaxant. So dandrolene is a central muscle relaxant, right? Baclofen is a peripheral muscle relaxant, peripheral muscle relaxant. And atropin is something which we use along with neostigmin to counteract the muscarinic side effect of neostigmin. So answer would be neostigmin. Next question. Now this question was on drug interaction, uh, benzodiazepine and barbiturate. For benzodiazepine and barbiturates, which are two? I mean, which are two? So you can go for multiple say, uh, uh, answers. Uh, what students told me in the options, it was one and two is correct, two and three is correct, three and four is correct, like this. So I would just tell you which are the two statements because I exactly I don't know what sequence was arranged right. When I would get the final questions with proper options, I would do that. So let me see all the options. Plumazenil is antidote for barbiturate. This is a wrong statement. Plumazenil is antidote for benzodiazepine. It is not for barbiturate. So this statement is incorrect. Uh, benzodiazepine and barbiturate has additive sedation with alcohol. You guys, any anesthetic agent, any sedative agents, if we give them with alcohol, they have an additive effect, right? Always they have an additive effect. There will be more CNS depression. So this is a correct statement. Hyopentone has a shorter duration of action due to metabolism. I have so many times told you, they all are ultra short acting, but not because they are metabolized, rather because they are redistributed. So yes, it has ultra short action, but because of redistribution, not because of metabolism. You know, final metabolism of thiopentone we have discussed takes 24 to 48 hours. So this is a wrong statement. This is also a wrong statement. Now, benzodiazepine and barbiturates, now both acts on GABA channel, yes. They both act on GABA A chloride channel, right? So there is no confusion. Now, a lot of students were having a confusion that, okay, if GABA A channel is given with chloride, it's only benzodiazepine which acts. No, both barbiturate and benzodiazepine, they act on the same GABA channel. Barbiturates can have a direct effect on the GABA. They can directly open the GABA channel also and facilitate the chloride ion transmission through the GABA channel. 
and benzodiazepine only the difference is benzodiazepine cannot directly open the GABA channel. They can only facilitate the entry of chloride through the GABA channel. But they both act on same GABA A channel. They both act on same GABA A channel. So this is also the correct statement. So B and D are correct. B and D are correct. Okay. Next question. Which of the following is new psychoactive drug which rapidly acts to treat depression? Now, this the psychiatric uh, uh, psychiatric faculty must have uh, discussed with you. But uh, like I also took because my drug of interest was in this option, ketamine, and the answer was also ketamine. Now, uh, ketamine, I have taught you that ketamine has so many new roles and it's such a drug which has garnered so much interest nowadays. So. I think ketamine would be in your next exam also. Ketamine is an important drug for some of the exams recently, even for your NEAT, next NEAT exam, any exam. So guys, what is, so answer is new psychoactive drug which rapidly acts to treat uh, depression, which acts to treat depression is ketamine. We use low dose ketamine. We use low dose ketamine in depression management. So ketamine has a lot of newer rules. Ketamine, we all know, is good analgesic. Good analgesic. Ketamine is a, a less respiratory depressant. Less respiratory depressant. Ketamine is uh, sympathomyomatic. It stimulates the sympathetic nervous system, which is, again, one of the ways by which it would be effective in depression. It is sympathomyomatic. It, what does ketamine do? It increases the adrenaline and noradrenaline concentration in the blood and also a dopamine concentration. So ketamine has some mood elevation, uh, uh, let's say, uh, effect. And ketamine also produce a very special type of anesthesia, dissociative anesthesia, in which there is a thalmocortical dissociation. And it's a psychomimetic drug, psychomimetic drug. So it says it produces dissociative anesthesia in low dose. In high dose, it can produce a full-blown anesthesia. Matlab, it can produce a good depth of anesthesia, right? It is a good analgesic. It's a less respiratory depressant drug. It is a pseudomyomatic drug, right? It has multiple benefits, okay? The one major issue with ketamine, the problem with ketamine, major problem with ketamine is that it dries the secretion. I mean, sorry, it increases the secretion, increases the secretions, the oral secretion. So we need to give it with glycopyrrolate pre-medication. So we have to give glycopyrrolate pre-medication before giving ketamine. Otherwise, oral secretion is very much increased with ketamine. That's one demerit of ketamine. Okay. Okay. Now coming on the fourth question. In septic shock patient remains hypotensive despite adequate fluid resuscitation. So what would be the next drug? What would be next drug next drug now you know there could not be any discussion on this this is the guideline that we have to follow and the surviving sepsis guideline the surviving sepsis guideline what does it say that whenever we get a, 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 a patient in septic shock what is our initial resuscitation plan what is our initial resuscitation plan we give 30 ml per kg body weight of fluid we give balanced salt solution, we give, let's say, RL or plasma light, uh, 30 ml per kg body weight. And in spite of giving this much fluid, if our target is not achieved, what is the target that we have to achieve? The mean arterial pressure more than 65 mm of Hg. So this is our target. And so if this is not achieved, we will start an inotrope. And the first inotrope which we start is your noradrenaline, noradrenaline, right? If after starting the noradrenaline in its uh, recommended dose, a patient's uh, blood pressure is still uh, below, the mean arterial pressure is still below 65 mm of Hg, then what do we do? We give dopamine, we supplement the patient with dopamine and or vasopressin, preferably vasopressin. So for after nor noradrenaline, the second inotrope would be Vasopressin. You know why? Because vasopressin is not proarrhythmogenic. It does not cause tachycardia, etc. Now, after vasopressin also, if adequate, we are not achieving the adequate mean arterial pressure, then we will go for, we will add dopamine. Dopamine. Yes. Vasopressin is the second line of inotrope. First line is dopamine, then vasopressin, and 
then dop- uh, first is noradrenaline then vasopressin and then dopamine so first one is always answer would be noradrenaline there would be no doubt in it we start noradrenaline infusion right okay then next question about lumbar puncture which is incorrect which are incorrect rather which are incorrect again the, we had to go for multiple answers in this question as well urgent indication if suspected subarachnoid hemorrhage with uh, inconclusive ct yes that's a very urgent indication to do lumbar puncture and which would help us in making a diagnosis of subarachnoid hemorrhage can be done in thrombocytopenia well it can be done in thrombocytopenia this statement is not incorrect but in bracket they have just given the platelet count more than 10000 more than 10000 now this is incorrect we can do lumbar puncture in thrombocytopenia because thrombocytopenia normal is 1.5 to 4.5 below 1.5 comes under thrombocytopenia but we cannot do it at the level of 10,000 platelet. We have to see that platelet should be above 40,000. So above 40,000, then only we will go for lumbar puncture because there would be risk of epidural or spinal hematoma, right? So it can be done, it can be done, but not in the platelet just above 10,000. Above 40,000 would have been the answer. So this is an incorrect statement, incorrect statement, okay? Meningitis is an unusual complication. Yes, meningitis and copolitis is a rare complication. It's an unusual compl uh, complication. So this is also a correct option. Post-op headache is more common in female and old age. Well, it is more common in female, no doubt. Again, half part is right. But at young age, it is more common in young age. So post-tap headache is more common in young age, female, a uh, young age, female, and patient with previous headache history, pre patient with previous history of headache, previous history of headache, right? And if during the procedure, these are the patient's, um, let's say, uh, factors, and during the procedure, if you had done, mul taken multiple attempts, multiple attempts, then again, or used very wide bone needle, then again, the risk of post trap headache would be higher, okay? Now, sixth question. Role of procalcitonin in pneumonia. Now, this I just wanted to discuss, though I have not discussed it in my main lecture. Uh, role of procalcitonin must have discussed in medicine or where. Procalcitonin, but since I deal with ICU, so I just wanted to discuss this question with you. Uh, procalcitonin has, the role has only been established in one condition, community-acquired pneumonia, not in the VAP, ventilator-associated pneumonia. So for us, it is not that important, though we get it done in ICUs. But in community acquired pneumonia, it has some role. Its uh, its role has been proven by various study in some places. Uh, the role of procalcitonin in, in community acquired pneumonia is guiding your early antibiotic discontinuation. So whenever patient of pneumonia comes, you immediately start the antibiotic. We get the procalcitonin done, and if we get the procalcitonin value less than certain level, less than 0.2 nanogram microgram per deciliter less than 0.2 microgram per deciliter right and patient seems stable then we can discontinue the antibiotic or if patient is on antibiotic for five days and the procal level is less than 0.2 microgram per deciliter and patient is stable then we can discontinue the antibiotic and the patient the procal patient is on antibiotic for five days and procal level is above 0.2 microgram per deciliter very high or above whatever this cut benchmark then i would continue antibiotic or maybe i would change antibiotic if patient is deteriorating so yes in early antibiotic discontinuation the role of procalcitonin is in community acquired pneumonia and there is no doubt on this answer this is the recommendation of the latest studies and this is what we follow okay then there was one question on tension pneumothorax for which I couldn't get the options, but something related to ventilation was asked in the option. I would just know, I would just discuss one line which was provided to me that uh, positive pressure ventilating, ventilation. If you, what is the uh, treatment of pneumothorax? What is the management of pneumothorax? For pneumothorax, immediately we have to do the tube thoracotomy. We have to put the chest tube, chest tube drainage. This is what we do. This is the management of choice, management of choice. So if I start, I have a trauma patient and he's pneumothorax and he has developed pneumothorax and saturation is dipping. 
I start doing positive pressure ventilation with a very high tidal volume, then there is a possibility that a normal pneumothorax would get converted into tensional pneumothorax and the patient will deteriorate very even more. It would become a dire emergency kind of condition. So positive pressure ventilation with very high tidal volume, right? can convert a normal pneumothorax and tension pneumothorax. Now, other options I couldn't get. If you can put it in the chart box, the other options for this question, I can come up with the answer. But this is a correct statement that positive pressure ventilation can change a normal pneumothorax and tension pneumothorax. Okay, other options I couldn't get. So these were the questions which I wanted to discuss. Uh, so again, role of procalcitonin in pneumonia, early antibiotic, its role is in early antibiotic discontinuation in community acquired pneumonia, right? The role has been established only in community acquired pneumonia. About lumbar puncture, which are incorrect statement, can be done in thrombocytopenia with plated count above 10,000, incorrect. post up headache, more common in female and old age, incorrect. Then in septic shock, patient remains hypotensive despite adequate fluid resuscitation. What should be done next? We should start noritinoline. They can ask next time. Noritinoline has been started. Still, the BP is low. What is the next vasopressor? Vasopressor. Got it? Okay. Which of the following is new psychoactive drug which rapidly acts to treat depression? Answer is ketamine. For benzodiazepine and barbiturates, which are true, uh, they cause additive sedative sedation with alcohol and both have effect on GABA in general. Which of the following act as a reversal agent for opuronium, a neuromuscular blocking agent, neurostigma? So these were the seven, six, seven questions which I could gather related to my topics. There were a lot of questions, I mean, uh, integrated question. If anything you want to, uh, you can suggest in the chat box and tell me, I mean, I want to ask me, you can put in the chat box. Later on also, I will, I will uh, go through it and I will try to form the question more, let's say more relevant. Any if anything more relevant is suggested, I will try to form the question on it. Right? Okay. I hope you all had a good exam because the paper was really not tough. It's just a matter of how much accurate you are in this paper. And I hope you all have a very good result. My best wishes for your future. Thank you.